Call this meeting to order. Determine there's a quorum present. Commissioner Wardwell, Commissioner Vasquez, Commissioner Edelton, Commissioner Flores, and myself. We have a quorum. Uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Edelton. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Approving minutes. Move. A motion, Commissioner Flores. Second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Citizens' comments. I have none. And uh, did, did you have to take off your shirt to get your second answer? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're always making fun of me. So like, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go and throw this out there because I thought it's funny. The reason you're floating is you get a second magazine and said, i got to go take off my shirt and you're scared to wear your back here or what? <laughs> so we had the National Guard pull the line That way you will not be a back. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Approving subdivision plans. Uh, try to get that back. None. Uh, approving certificates of compliance. None. Approving monthly reports from elected officials. None. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nelson. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Approving bills to be for payment. Second. Uh, I have a motion, Commissioner Nelson. Second, Commissioner uh, Flores. We're going to pay everything, but the, 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 was it $9? Nine dollars? The tip. Nine dollars. Okay. We're going to put everything but nine dollars. Yeah. And I'll write a check for that. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Item 10, discuss possible action for approval with hot tax funding and in kind donation services for our upcoming nonprofit fundraiser next month, Devil's River Run for Hope. Presentation. From Jessica Hester, Executive Director, Founder of Brooks Blossoms at this sheet. Okay, you want to come do the presentation? You have the floor. Come on up. Don't be scared. Mm -hmm. Promise we don't buy it or anything. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for having me here. Um, so, uh, basically, our event is a fundraiser to raise uh, funds for pediatric cancer. And um, we're hosting it on the Dolan Creek Road, starting at the Devil's River, right on the water, and it ends at the McKenna Ranch. Um, it is a marathon and half marathon race, which is a, a destination race, so it, it, the complicated part is getting people down to the river in the morning um, and, and transporting them there. Uh, we have wanted to find out because we are working very hard to bring in a level of ecotourism and highlight Alberta County and to find out if we could um, have support from the hot tax funding as far as our advertising efforts. How much were you asking for? Just to be... Um, <laughs> all, all we can do is have an answer, okay? <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I don't remember. It, 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 I, I, I've sent that part in on the budget, um, but I, I believe... Was it five? I believe so. It was five, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Five zero vote. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. your support. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, sir. <coughs> Item 11, presentation on status of emergency SHC program contract number 7219163. Is he here? Is he not here? Okay, no action taken this presentation. Number 12, request for authorization for County Justice Sign proposed amendment number 3. Amendment number 3 to Administrative Services Contract Equity CDC for the Administration of Colonial Self Help and Emergency Services Help uh, for Colonial's Program. Second. And a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. 5 0 vote. <laughs> Item 13, approval of draw number 3 under SHC contract number 7219163. Is 
in the amount of $27,773.00 and authorized county <laughs> Second. A motion of Commissioner Meadowton, second Commissioner Flores, all those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Item 14, approval of draw number 21 under SHC contract number 7210113 in the amount of $3,000 in authorized county judge, county order to sign draw number 21, public services draw checklist. Move. I have a motion, okay. Commissioner Flores, second Commissioner Vasquez, all those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. <coughs> <laughs> morning, Judge Commissioner. Good morning. 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 Correct. That's correct. Why are we going over? We have a lot of sick people. Yes. Are these COVID-related issues? Sorry? Are they COVID-related issues? No. You sure? I'm pretty sure. I think these are uh, <laughs> mental health issues. <coughs> Trying to get your money there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <coughs> they might be, we'll look into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just make sure that they're not. Yeah. Motion to approve that again. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner uh, Flores. All those in favor? All right. And, and part of this, and, and you just brought it up, uh, a lot of mental health issues. We were actually in a meeting yesterday. And I'm not jump into that because of what he just brought up, what the sheriff just brought up. They are wanting to build a facility, and there's two different groups uh, that are wanting to build a facility in Uvalde. Uh, it would be a 49-bed facility, which would help with this process. Uh, if we can't get them out and get them a bed somewhere, then they stay here, and then everything basically, because there is here, they're on our dollar. Uh, and, and in reality, the help that we can get them here, uh, it would just be better if we get them somewhere else and get them a little bit more uh, professional help than what can, we can actually do here. But there is talk right now, and we'll be bringing something back to the court to see about the resolution uh, in a couple of weeks to uh, to go before the, the federal government. And uh, Tony Rosales had sent a deal that uh, basically I think it's been you know, quite a while that they've actually had earmarks now. But this will be some of this, this process that maybe uh, we do a resolution, the city does a resolution, and all the counties around us, and maybe sort of piggyback and try to get some earmark money for, uh, for this facility, which would be somewhere around the 20 some odd million dollar mark. But again, I mean, if we can get some of these people out uh, and get them some more help, then that dollar there will, will drop. Is there any way to track what we spend a year on, on just the mental health part? We have, we, we put together, uh, Tom had put some, together some numbers, uh, Sheriff had given us some numbers, JPs had given us some numbers, and we don't have the amount of, uh, of dollars that we spent, but I think we can begin to, to put that together for the simple reason that last year there was a hundred, and correct me if I'm wrong, 115, 119 people that we transported out. Mm -hmm. uh, to a tune of over $39,000 is what the deputies put on the vehicles. Uh, this year already, uh, we are, I think, at 15, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And, uh, and there are the five different facilities, which last year, the amount of people that got sent out, uh, was 119, now that I remember. Uh, they, they were sent out to 10 different facilities. So, you know, it's one of those deals that you, you track you know, it just snowballs, and that's what we were talking about yesterday. You know, you have to send them, but then you're waiting for time here, uh, and you're paying for them to be in our facilities because you can't get them anywhere else. And we're all fighting. It's like a race to, you know, one bed comes up, and you got five different sheriff's cars showing up for one bed. This is one of those lovely <clears throat> state unfunded mandates where the state has failed to fund mental health issues, and it's being 
dumped on the back of the local taxpayers to pick it up. Um, <coughs> while the state has funding for mental health, they, they refuse to do what they need to do and fund it and address it the way it needs to be addressed. So it ends up costing us a lot of money over years. No, and, and to put a number together, I mean, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we can put a number together because there's so many other moving parts to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's like when you think you figured it out, you know, like we got all our costs put together, there's always something else that pops up. We've had people, uh, this last year or the year before, Sheriff, I think we had like four, four, that, that there was just like a revolving door. We had uh, one of them that, uh, was literally cutting himself and, and eating himself. Uh, uh, we had one of them that was uh, eating his own feces, uh, and then we've had one, and I think in Comstock that if he had not, if he had not broke into a board patrol's house, he'd have probably been shot. Uh, but he just happened to break into a board patrolman's house and uh, was restrained. But I think if he'd have broke into anybody else's house, uh, you know, and the individual uh, just. Thought it was his house. I mean, he wasn't breaking it for any other reason. Just he just thought it was his own house. And did it feel quick that last year's numbers are going to be low due to COVID because some of these facilities that we needed to transport weren't accepting uh, patients? Mm -hmm. So those numbers are low. The year before is going to give you more of an actual picture. Uh, <clears throat> item B: travel and training, five thousand dollars. I know that we've taken out everybody's travel and training with that people coming back to ask for more money. Yeah, I've got several trips to Austin plus some conferences. Uh, we've got to go testify on several bills that are up there. So I need to move. I had actually put this under my name, but um, uh, I need to move 5000 I guess, out of uh, operating over to travel and training. Motion to approve. <laughs> Moving from operating to, to travel and training, we have a motion, Commissioner Flores, second, Commissioner Wardlaw. Who seconded? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Zero vote. Item C, tax office 38,900, for integration of Del Rio property tax database from available appropriations. We got paid some, we're getting paid some money, mm -hmm. right, from the city. We are. Uh, can we pull it from there? Can, uh, well, we, that, that's our decision as revenue, and that just goes to the pot. So, oh. what is that we're doing? Converting the databases. When we, this is our portion of converting the data? Well, we're taking over that role. Mm -hmm. So, we're taking their database, which was a different database, and converting it into our database. They paid for it. I'm sorry? They paid for it. They, they, they paid for it. The the fund the fund yeah, the they, city. The funds for this or the funds no, coming from the city for the we, service? Well, yes, we we're about 171000 yeah. sorry, Judge, coming from the city, yes. But the, that money went into the to the general fund. Correct. Uh, and was put into the general fund, what we were collecting, what we were going to make off the city, everything they were paying was put into the general fund during the budget process. Motion to approve out of committee. <clears throat> have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 In order to facilitate that, we're going to, the $300,000 that we do have set aside for, we're going to have to release probably about 60000 of that. Okay. Or do you want to release 100000 of that? Or how much of that do you want to release? We've set aside 500000 to begin for COVID. We've set aside 200 out of the $500,000, but we still have the $300,000 sort of mark for COVID. So that's what he's getting at right now is if you want to go in and release 60000 or 100000 that would take from a bunch of our contingency <laughs> We still have money out of the two first two hundred. No, no, yeah, I know, but I just thought contingency was contingency. You know, the earmark separate and other contingency? We do. When you set the budget up, you set a half a million dollars strictly for the earmark separate. It is. All right. I'll amend my motion to release. Uh, what do we need, 100000 i do 100 and that way we don't have to do it again. If you don't mind. Uh, second accept. Commissioner Hutchins? Second. Hutchins? You're set? Yes, sir. Okay. All those in favor? Five zero. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 17, Treasurer's Report. No report, sir. Thank you, sir. You accomplished that. <laughs> We're going to go back to item 11, Presentation on Status of Emergency FHC Program, Contract Number 7219163. And the other one is probably just the information on the back. Oh, thank you, sir.
Uh, Judge Commissioner, sorry for being tardy. We're doing great. We've uh, expended uh, approximately $197,000, dollars of the original award. Um, the original award amount was about $249,000 in program costs and an extra $20,000 in admin. Uh, we did so great that the state asked us to take another $25,000. Uh, so we're still trying to identify beneficiaries for those extra funds. So if you know of any folks in your communities that, that do need the financial assistance from COVID, we still got some. Uh, we've been recently on the radio, advertising, put out some flyers, also printed out some nice new posters. So we're trying to put those around some of the areas as well and trying to uh, expand those funds as well. What's going to happen with leftover money at the end of the day when this <laughs> COVID's all over with, uh, if there's any leftover money? We're trying to avoid that. We'd like to spend it all. I think there is the need here. There are still some folks that haven't heard about it. Um, the contract is set to expire May the 15th. If we have to reserve some funds, we have up to 30 or even 60 days to reserve funds. We'll have a couple, yeah, okay. really until July, June or July, expend it. So I don't, I don't perceive that as being an issue. Sir. Okay. All right. We're good. Thank you, John. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 18, discussion of possible action regarding Valverde County investment policy. Aaron? This is just in accordance that, uh, with Public Funds Investment Act that we renew this every year. Uh, we're maintaining the same type of uh, investment policy that we've had the last two years. Uh, with the and motion Commissioner Levinson, second Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? All right. 5 0 vote. <coughs> That's easy. Item 19, discussing matters relating to COVID-19. Uh, we have a clinic this Wednesday. It is open to everybody 16 or older. And there's a link on the county website, a link on the city website, and we pushed it out to all our employees also to get that out. Uh, please, uh, if you're gonna get the vaccine, go online and register online. We, you even got to where, you know, you can actually take a picture of the screen on the TV and bring that so we can scan it versus uh, trying to get everything done there. It slows up the process if we have to do it there. So please get online and register online and try to get the paperwork done. That way we don't have a long line outside waiting in the heat because it's just the process of being slowed down. Uh, <clears throat> there was a clinic. And on Friday in Comstock, I think 100, 100 plus individuals in Comstock that were, uh, that uh, received the vaccine, uh, Commissioner Nettleton and Elizabeth uh, put together a list. Uh, I want to thank Elizabeth. Uh, she was out there and Tom and, and Commissioner Nettleton uh, on Friday. It was just, it was, it was impressive. The National Guard, of course, I mean, they're the ones that put the show on, but uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in order to make this happen. Uh, it was just impressive. Also on Sunday, there was another, uh, on Saturday we had a, a clinic, and then on, on Sunday there was another clinic at, uh, at the community center in Senegas. Uh, Commissioner Flores and, and Sandra uh, were out there, of course, the National Guard, Dr. Palau and, and Roland. Uh, and the last text that I got on Sunday at 8 something was, I think it was 202, 202, 202 individuals that were vaccinated out there. And that was actually a drive by, uh, which was, I think, the first for the county. Uh, it was, it was different. Yeah, it was really different. But no, it went well. Again, folks, please, uh, go online and register. Uh, <laughs> last week, and, and I think even now, everybody's still freaking out because we got 800 for tomorrow, and then there was another 4,600 Pfizer that were issued to Valverde County to be handed out. Uh, so, you know, uh, here we go, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have nothing else. Do y'all have any Judge, I, I'd like to say something. Uh, we're helping out the people at the community center. Uh, Carmen and Sandra are helping them out, getting them registered, the ones that they're not vaccinated yet. So if anybody needs any help, uh, just to call the community center. That'll work. Um, where are we at on numbers? Okay. I, I our, our numbers are, our numbers, uh, and the sheriff can attest to this, they're, they are definitely not climbing. Uh, you know, if anything, uh, compared to other weeks, it looks like they're going down a little bit. I think the thing that helped, 
I hate saying this, but the thing that really helped was the spawn. Uh, everybody stayed home. Uh, couldn't get out. I really believe that uh, when the governor lifted the mask ordinance, uh, that it was really going to, uh, it's just going to be dangerous. But when you go out into our community, I know that uh, I've been out to other towns around us, and uh, they're not wearing masks, but, but in our community, we went to Walmart a couple of times, and gone day she did it. You know, Walmart, I think I had two people, I saw two people, then when we got in the line, they were from the same family, husband and wife. Uh, we had another time that there was probably nine that weren't wearing them. But for the most part, everybody's wearing a mask. So I don't think, you know, what I believe was that we were going to get a spike, hopefully, you know, knock on wood, it don't happen. But it's one of those deals that uh, in our community, everybody, for the most part, they're still wearing a mask. Even when you walk into the restaurants, there's still a lot of people wearing uh, masks. So uh, it, it's going to help. So I think that's the reason, you know, the next couple of weeks are going to be a, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Just because of spring break, it'll take a couple of weeks since, you know, right after that. Uh, but so far, our numbers are, are not climbing. Uh, they're looking good. Our hospitalization also, I mean, it's Last time I looked, we didn't have any in Del Rio. I think there were still a few in the same town, but I don't remember what the number was. Um, are we still doing any of the contact tracing stuff, or have we refocused that into the back? We have, uh, since the city had hired some, and, and we have some, uh, we're still doing the contract tracing. Uh, I will tell you that the two individuals or three individuals that we hired at the beginning for the contract tracing, they are doing contract tracing, but they're splitting their hours to where they can come help with the clinics. Uh, they're, they're, they sort of shifted more to vaccine than uh, than the tracing, okay. uh, and just because again okay, they're, they're just they're yeah they're not allowed to trace there. So mm -hmm. are, are we okay with personnel needed to be able to continue the vaccine at the level, the, the clinics at the level? The, we had set aside some funds uh, in order to uh, hire more people. Uh, we've asked Dr. Palau to to give us a list, I think, of ten. Correct me if I'm wrong. Ten, ten, ten people to help us to be able to administer the vaccine. You know, we knew this. We knew that it would, if it's come, you know, that it would come. That you know, it's just real hard relying on volunteers every week. I mean, it's just you, know, you, you get really excited about showing up and doing it and helping, but you've also got a family life, and, and you know, after seven, eight clinics, it just it gets hard. So we are going to have to hire that, and we have money already set aside for that. And at the point that we need to come back for more, then we'll come back to the point. But that's, it's, it's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. I just want to make sure we have enough resources. <coughs> the, the, the quicker we can get everybody vaccinated, mm -hmm. the quicker we can maybe get out of it. <coughs> yeah. And like I said, this 4,600 vaccines, we've also asked uh, for more help from the National Guard, uh, see if they can help us with, with some more people to help us uh, administer the vaccine. The group that's here right now, under, uh, hope I don't mess this up, Lieutenant Moffitt and his group right now is just, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, both of y'all had, uh, had, had a taste of this this weekend. They're, they're impressive. Uh, you know, it, uh, you go in and it's like, you know, it's like, they just bop, 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 and it's like, damn, the tables are moving, chairs are moving, and they're sweeping and they're mopping, and it's like, okay, we're done. <laughs> yeah. uh, but now they're they're impressive. Uh, you know, the clinic in, in Comstock, you know, 100 vaccines, 100, 100 vaccines in Comstock, you know, and then for them to set up in the building that they did, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. And then you go on Sunday and you do a drive-through, uh, which, you know, I, I, I hadn't been a part of one. I mean, I don't think we've done one. Uh, and, it, and everything worked out. It was just, it was just amazing. And then the people, you know, people don't realize how much work goes on behind the scenes. But uh, those individuals, you know, years back and years back, I mean, it was just the, the crews. You know, the crews were out there. You know, Tom went on uh, on Friday, and Ulisa and Elizabeth and, and uh, Elva were call, helping Elizabeth coffee to look she you know, gone to go to the clinic. So it was just impressive. It was impressive. <clears throat> Anybody else? No. Uh, item 20, discussion on immigrants. Uh, it's still a problem we continue to have. They have, uh, I was informed that they would be testing. They are testing the individuals that they're releasing. So that's helping. Uh, 
if the sheriff keeps on giving interviews, he will be a prime time star type deal. <laughs> but uh, I guess we have more and more interest uh, coming up. I do believe, though, that, that in, in right now, compared to 2019, uh, we have a worse mess now than what we've had in 2019, especially with our kids. Uh, that, I don't think, is getting put out like it was put out in 2019. Uh, for one, I think the governor uh, threw a little kick the other day because they weren't allowed to go in and look. So I think he's still upset because of that. Uh, and like they held him back. Uh, this is the last news, uh, last email that I got, which I, you know, that doesn't make sense. I mean, you're, you're sitting in our state. We should be able to go see what the hell's going on, especially to go in there and investigate if, if there's any, you know, anything going wrong. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? We would. We would. Yeah, yeah. So I'm being real careful. I uh, really am. I'm not, not, I'm not cussing. I'm not throwing out that phone. Uh, but it is a little bit strange that uh, our own governor has not been, uh, you know, sort of being backed out. Uh, don't make sense. They won't even allow media in the facilities. And we've asked repeatedly. And uh, I know that Senator Cruz and them went and they actually took some video. Right. Um, tried to take some video. Um, it, they so. It, 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 it appears like they're trying to hide something more than anything else to me. But, uh, what happens to these people? When you say we're testing. What happens to the people that test positive? Uh, <laughs> a good question. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, they, they, have, they have had some sheriff come on up. They have had some. Uh, we had one that we thought was a little girl that we had some when all this stuff started that, that they ended up testing her in the hospital because uh, she did have symptoms, but at the end of the day did not did not test positive, but they actually uh, kept the mother and were going to keep the girl in quarantine uh, before they released them to us. We did have one case, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, chicken pox a couple months ago, and, and that one also they kept in quarantine. And, and nothing else to do. Well, they keep them in the ice facility. They go to the ice facility. They, they, they keep them. Yeah, they they're, not, they're not keeping them. Okay. No, 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 they keep them separate. So one yeah. of the one of the plans that that because there's funds available for our NGOs uh, right now, and we have to have with the group uh, last week on on, on uh, reimbursement. Uh, one of the things that. Uh, that was brought out is maybe if we could go in there and build some showers for them uh, and then get reimbursed, put money in to get reimbursed. And, and I told them that we would look at it for the simple reason that the facility that they have right now for them to shower, uh, it's you, you've got kids that you all sit in the back playing soccer or, or whatever, and then you've got uh, grown ladies and kids uh, bathing uh, completely naked. Uh, which is a little bit shocking to to the other kids that are just not used to that. Uh, so they've asked if we can build showers, and like I told them, we put a material list together, and then you know we see what we can do. Uh, that they're talking about uh, something on a wood floor, just something portable that they can move later on. Uh, but I think this would help the individuals, especially in Chihuahua, in the Chihuahua area, just not to have to put up the okay, that portable. Shower system, like a trailer. You know. They have one that they brought in, which was a three stall with the, with the water, uh, with the freeze that we had. Some of their pipes busted. This is something that they're looking for. They're looking for something right now, uh, but the way the funding is, you really can't buy. But if we could build it or something, I mean, it's just it's it's well, I know a little bit different. The congressman has sent I guess he sent me an email. I guess he sent you one too about some funding to go pay for some of this immigration issue. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to get access to that funding? We can. There's two or three different uh, programs out there for funding. Uh, so, so we've looked at them. We had a guy from FEMA come down uh, last week, uh, and he was he was incredible. He, what he said was, is that 19 million, 19 million out of the first dollars that were set out in 2019 that were not spent. Uh, so that's part of it, and then there was another $110 million set up that that hasn't even begun to get touched. So the first $19 million, we'd be working on it. And then come up with a list of funds uh, that we could get reimbursed for, or, or a list of stuff that we can get reimbursed for out of the 110.
So there is funds out there to, to, to get reimbursed. Why doesn't the, 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 the build a facility located in each county that's designed to handle this if they have this kind of money? So to operate one of those facilities, one of those shelters, it's about uh, four million or a million every four months. Uh, I'm hearing that there's another one going up in Eagle Pass and possibly one here also to hold these individuals because uh, the surge is just too big. They can't they can't handle it. No, I mean, this isn't going to go away anytime soon. So. No. Not with the policy that we have in place. Not with the policy we have in place right now. It's a catch and release type deal. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a point when the Chihuahua Center and these these small fixes work for now, but yeah. we're going to have to look at some long term issues because apparently this policy is not going to change. We're going to be dealing with this for quite a while. So it would appear to me that if the federal government has that kind of money, they should be looking at some sort of facilities and some sort of funding to to these. Uh, companies that can manage and operate these facilities. And, the, and what the sheriff just said, these facilities are going to be built. I mean, they're, they're, they're more for minors. For them to uh, try to take care of them. But at the end of the day, it's just a stopping point. They're going to ship them uh, mm -hmm. or they'll go to their final destination or whatever. But I was asked uh, last week on Thursday uh, because they've gone to one of the facilities this lady had, and she says, I can't find the girls. I said, what are you talking about? She says, there's more boys, you know, but where are the girls? Because we know that there's a lot of girls coming, which I can't get an answer to that either. Yeah, and I hadn't heard. I hadn't so, heard so that said. is a good question. If you, you know, if you can see, if you're going and you can see all these boys, where, where are the girls? And where, where are we putting the girls? Where are we putting the young ladies? Uh, and this lady here on Thursday was really concerned about that. She said she'd been down in the valley and that she can't get an answer. And, and, and you know, <laughs> it's really difficult because you have more trope that in reality, I mean, they really like their jobs for lack of something else. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they, they enjoy what they do. They're good at what they do, but they really can't give you the whole answer because they really like their job. Mm -hmm. And I'd hate to put one of them in a position that maybe they give us the well, my understanding, they've been, they've been a gag order issue for their ability to communicate with anybody, which is really, really sad that, that we're in this position. It only leads you to believe that they're hiding stuff, and we don't want the public to know the reality. Well, we see the reality because you deal with it every day. The rest of the world doesn't know. That's why there's several sheriffs that are being outspoken along the border from uh, Arizona and Texas being outspoken so we can get the message out as to what is actually uh, taking place uh, on the border because they're not. And I spoke to some retired agents yesterday, and they're going to be they're going to be the voice that's coming up in the next week or two because uh, the people that are on the ground they can't they can't they can't speak and and they're you know and they're overwhelmed with what uh, with what they're dealing with so. Last week, when we met with those individuals, some individuals, Sheriff, you you said that there was a day there that 75% of the day was tasked with immigrants. Yes. Right? So so 75% of one day we we handled uh, 54 immigrants for for border patrol and detaining them. Uh, I had yesterday at three o'clock I had a number of 484 for the month that we have handled. Uh, as an office, uh, I know that overnight there was another 20 or 30 uh, that they that they dealt with. So we're pushing 500 that we've we've held for them. Sometimes, you know, you, you got border patrol is doing the best they can with the resources they have. Sometimes deputies will wait there, you know, an hour, hour and 30 minutes to to that shows up, picks them up because that's all they're doing. They're just turning them from one point to another. Sheriff, yesterday uh, was the first day that I saw a highway trooper down there on the Vega. Yes. You know, I haven't seen them before, but I guess it's time to go up there. Yes. So I had a meeting the week before last with some of the residents up there, and they wanted some speed limit signs. And I got, to take, I got a message yesterday. So we asked for a speed limit sign, and you sent two deputies, two patrolmen, and five game wardens. So <laughs> that's what I was on the river yesterday. Yeah. So, and only one of them was speed limit signs. So they were kind of... I guess complaining a little bit is, you know, a lot of law enforcement out there. 
but you know it's it's needed. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's just one crossing. Uh, that that uh, longer, longer. What do you call it? Border long border so, lights. Yeah. That's just one crossing. So it's a lot of activity there. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. And then we've had uh, CNN and three or four other uh, news agencies reach out to want an interview for me. And, and I need to be real careful. I've been real hesitant to do it because I, I sort of come unglued a little bit. So I've been trying to real hard uh, <laughs> to, to keep it. Yeah, it's like i got to write it down. That way I don't tell them exactly what I think because then people really get offended. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's been... It's been different. Yeah, we're we're getting. I'm getting two or three requests a day from companies that uh, news outlets that want to come down. I got some scheduled for for May. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just uh, all of a sudden we are a uh, a location of interest. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one. Location of interest. Anything else? We're good. I have twenty. We're good. Good. Yes. Item 21, request and approval for support of a resolution for pedestrian bridge over the Union Pacific Railway and Highway 90. This is actually something that the court has talked about. Most of the uh, I have a motion, Commissioner Nevis, second. second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 5 0 vote. Discussion possible action regarding radio towers of Bowery County. Uh, we, we went to a meeting last week with uh, the COG. They were looking at going from uh, Motorola, a Gator switch, to Kenwood, and then two other switches in another county versus the one in Austin. What came out of it is, bottom line is, they actually know that no maintenance and shit goes bad. So they, uh, it's only taken, I don't know what, how long, Sheriff, sure, since 06 or 04 is what they said, for them to figure it out that uh, if you don't maintain it, it will go bad. <laughs> Uh, so what they're asking, and they're going to bring it, they're going to bring us back uh, a resolution. I'll bring it back to the court. But just so y'all know, it's been a topic of conversation. We did get a grant for for help on one tower. Uh, we've already spent four hundred and some odd thousand dollars <coughs> in budget for communications in the sheriff's office, and we've been setting aside almost a hundred thousand dollars a year for the last three years for radios. So this will ensure that that. It looks like this will ensure that those radios will continue to work, the radios that we actually have with the system that we have. So it'll be it'll come back to us uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. And they are going to probably be asking for the county to set aside some money to maintain our towers, uh, probably based on population. Uh, hopefully it won't be based on towers since we have more towers than everybody else. Uh, so it'll be based on population uh, per county uh, in the COG. And we'll bring this back to us. What we'll happened to the funding that the COG had for years for this? And, and the money that they charge us on our cell phone bills and, and everything else for our 911s and everything else. Where's all that money go? We're supposed to be upkeeping all this and maintaining this. I will tell you that, that there's been so many people that had their spoon in the coffee that, that nobody really stirred it. It was just, it was just there. Uh, this court sat aside, uh, in 2019, $30,000, uh, which wasn't, didn't seem like it was a lot of money, but it helped get one of the towers back online, and then the tower at Beaumont <coughs> went back out to fix it. Uh, basically it was an empty cabinet, somebody took some of the pieces. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's not funny because, I mean, hell. <laughs> I mean, you know, you go out to fix it, there ain't nothing there. You know, and I, I, I ain't no technician, but you got to have the parts. Uh, uh, doesn't other agencies use these towers too? Uh, DPS, Tech Stock, Tech puts in $100,000 a year, every year, for maintenance of these towers. They are basically the only one really that, that has put any skin in the game. Uh, uh, DPS, Tom, DPS uses. I, one of the towers or something. I mean, they, Textile is the one that uses the majority of the towers. Who all does it service, Judge? Sir? Who all does it service? These towers? Police, uh, sheriff, um, fire department, EMS, Textile. Who else, sir? The PD, the PD wardens. Police. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but the one that had been paying into it to maintain it, really the only one that had just sort of been doing their job. Uh, what's next up? 
all along. Uh, $100,000. They set aside $100,000 to help maintain the counters. So we're supposed to maintain <coughs> it and bear the expense of the state agencies that utilize these things that aren't paying into this? Well, that's something that the COG was going to look into. The only problem with this is, is that, and I, and like we were up there last week, and like I told them, I don't have anybody that I can go to and ask a question on this. It was like nobody has answers for nothing. Uh, we tried to give them $30,000. This court set aside $30,000. We tried to give them $30,000, and they spent 20 some odd thousand dollars. I don't know if they spent off 30. At one point, they were $21,000 a year. And they, they needed more, that they needed more, they needed help. You didn't even spend what we gave But there was no person, I guess the biggest concern up there was that there was not an individual that you could go to and say, what do we need? And, and if I get you a check, who do we give it to? Uh, we couldn't even get that. Uh, they did say that, uh, that they would, uh, I think the county judge from Uvalde says, well, we, we're just going to go into the radio team. Well, hell, we should have been in the radio business. But not so, it's just like everybody's light came on and what we're, what we're doing does not work. So now uh, they're going to they're gonna put an MOU together. They'll get it to all the counties in the COG. And then it won't go through the COG. It'll go through the counties directly. Because uh, just more we're happy with the COG. Well, when we started this, uh, years and years ago when we used to have our own radio system and the state came in and spent <coughs> a bunch of money and they were going to upgrade and everything was going to be hunky-dory and then they all went away after that before that we had our own system we, we dealt with our own issues and now we're back to trying to fix something they started but never completed so so that technology commissioner is basically way out date we can only talk to ourselves uh, what I set aside money to keep the, the system going, and all of a sudden, in about 2012, 2013, they stopped funding that. So that's when the problem started to bring it no. to take place. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand that, but now we're stuck putting the bill so that everybody else can use it. You know. Well, and, and one of the things was, I think the sheriff from Real, you know, I, I think he threw it out there, and then. I sort of threw my two cents in, you know, they would like to talk to each other, the sheriffs and everybody else would like to teach, talk to each other from every county. So like I told them, hell, I can't even talk, we can't even talk to each other in our own county. Yeah. So, you know, if, if the cog is not going to help fix this problem because they're saying that it's, you know, basically they're the ones that want to fix it, they're the ones that should be fixing it. But like I told them, if y'all are not going to fix it, then we'll take care of our own county. I would rather for them to be able to talk well, yeah. to everybody else, but if that's not going to happen and we're just going to keep talking about this for another six, four or five months, then we will take measures and we will take steps to uh, be able to talk amongst ourselves within our county. And then, and when they heard it from all the sheriffs, the same thing that were at that meeting, uh, you know, everybody sort of jumped up and said, we got to fix it. So uh, I was on a phone call yesterday uh, before I went to Uvalde and they were, uh, Bottom line is there's going to be an MOU sent out. The maintenance of these towers will not go through the COG and will not go through the through Middle World Grant. It will be the counties uh, doing an MOU amongst themselves. That way we don't need to have state action. And uh, then we will set aside some money based on population. That's what I heard yesterday morning. Uh, in order to maintain all our towers, and you know, we are going to go into the radio business. Okay, just want to let y'all know what we were doing. Uh, item 23, discussion of possible action on property tax abatement policy. There's a chapter like 381, and then there's a couple of tax code uh, uh, chapters also. But in, in all, we got uh, what brought this up is we've got two companies right now that are wanting the tax abatement. Uh, I visited with a couple with both of them, and. You know, every policy uh, that we, that I've seen, and then Ori from the city, I need to mention her, because she's done an excellent job. She's given us a bunch of documentation and templates to help us. But everything that I've seen in there, for one, you have to have a policy. You just can't start handing out abatements unless you have a policy. That's one. But every, every one of these policies goes to an employment. doesn't go to, uh, it's not a, Uh, 
it's it's just because you build a thirty-three thousand or a sixty thousand square foot warehouse and you have uh, you know you bring in thirteen people that that's not uh, <laughs> the templates. They're they're more governed to how many employees you're bringing in, not what you're spending on a building. So uh, for one, you know, before we try to go down this road. Uh, I need direction from the court as to whether or not y'all want to, a policy to be brought back to y'all, something that y'all would consider. Uh, if it is, then we'll, we'll sort of put a bunch of templates together and then bring it to the court. So I don't, I don't, I don't want to waste a lot of time on this if this is not something that y'all would consider. I'll make that motion good. Okay. I, I think there's some good things with taxi business, but I think there's some bad things. So uh, I have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw, and second, Commissioner uh, Nettleton. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, zero vote. And, and I agree. I mean, we all <coughs> also have phone calls. Well, if you're going to do it for them, and I got more employees than them, and I've already had those this past week, uh, you know, where, where are you going to start? Where are you going to finish? So it's like everybody wants a slice of the pie, and the pie ain't cooked yet. But either way, uh, item 24, discussion of possible action on Fairgrounds Master Plan. Uh, we met with the Fairgrounds Committee. Um, Last week, the week before, uh, in that presentation or in that, they actually came up with a, with a couple ideas. Commissioner Wardlaw, the one building that we have up front, right next to where the racetrack starts, there's a 16,000 square foot uh, building there that would be used as an event center. Well, a recommendation from Commissioner Wardlaw was maybe if we set it up like a museum. Uh, and, that, and I think that, you know, Carl's here, that might give us more ground points. Maybe we could go and apply for a grant, something for, for kids and stuff like that to go through. Uh, but that was one of the, the one of the recommendations, you know, uh, the George Paul, put the George Paul in there, put artifacts from out of the lake, uh, you know, just, just have something for people to walk around and look at, uh, part of our history type deal. The other thing that, uh, that uh, one of the things that I brought up, and, and I was like I say, you've this this past week a couple of times. Uh, when you go to the fairplex um, up front, they've got all the armed services are represented by my flag, and there's a little memorial there of individuals that have passed and sort of given all. Uh, I'm going to have Carlos uh, at some point. Uh, oh, there it is. Thank you. I better not always. Yeah. He, uh, he's already put it in? Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, somebody else just moved. Uh, some type of, of, of center, like a memorial. Mm -hmm. Maybe put that part of it. Uh, you've got the, a little museum over here. Uh, you know, but that was some of the stuff that was, that, that we talked about. This one, uh, just talking about it with the committee, this Trump just came up the other day. Uh, an event center, they planned, uh, Twenty. This one's sixteen thousand over here. They have. They had gone in one. Actually, there was twenty six thousand square feet uh, in, in their plan, and they said if we could sort of put it in here, sort of plan for it later on, or, or put, make that part of the plan. Uh, uh, talk of the existing one that we have. Yeah, this one, uh, like from museum, and then could be used. And we're probably going to end up switching it. And I say switching it because we put the basketball over here, put this one over here, then they can also be used for four H. But they asked if we could, in the master plan, and it all boils down to money. You know, like I told them, you know, so what would this event center be used for? Meeting, any kind of a 4-H meeting, uh, rent it out. And I told them we would put it on the plan. But, I mean, it's one of those deals, you know, it's going to be all about funding. My, my, my personal opinion is that if we're going to build something like that, we need gymnasiums for our children. And, uh, I'm more inclined to spend money on something for the children for indoors, volleyball, basketball. We have no facility in this community for these kids. And if we're going to build something, I'm more inclined to go that route than any kids. Or just the, the, the 26,000 26, square foot. Uh, would get you uh, in the main area probably four uh, or five basketball courts for sure four, and those would be inside. But what we've talked about was was to do the ones up on top. Those are just the floor and the roof; they're covered. Uh, you know, and I guess part of the conversation with them was if we were going to build it, where would they build it? They put it over there where the arrows at. 
Uh, if we go to build it, it would be a multi-purpose facility. Uh, but I think we stick with what we've got, but plan, sort of plan for everything, but stick with what we've got and then go ahead and, and put that event center there. And in reality, you'd have uh, four, and you could really open up where that little, little offices are at that you could divide, you could get a fifth court in there. Yeah, because there, there's just no place for the, uh, for, for something like that. And, and I mean, I've traveled with my daughter all over the state of Texas, and they have some very big facilities, and they are booked solid every single weekend with tournaments. And these kids are always looking for a place to go. I mean, it, as long as it has something where we can put that in there where we have the ability to do basketball, volleyball, those types of indoor facilities too. I mean, all those facilities won't be open on a daily basis, right? I mean, once it's... I would hope so. And, and if that takes place, I mean, I think that would be the, 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 the benefit of building something like that where the, the, the community can go on a daily basis and play basketball or baseball or practice or, you know. Okay. We draw that in, tell us. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look, we'll take what they have, what the committee came up with, and then draw it in to where it could actually function as a multifunction facility. Now, if you set up six volleyball, or six basketball, that would be 12 volleyball courts. Good. One item that came up since the meeting was uh, the collection pool next to the uh, Broken Arena right there next to the school property. Mm -hmm. If that could be placed on the school property, because that's a low spot, not being used by the school, collection pool. The retention tank? Right there that's in the parking mm -hmm. lot. You wouldn't lose the parking that way. We can ask. We can ask him. Yeah, it's not a problem. The retention tank? That's, yeah. the, the one between the 4-H and the main parking lot? Right. Uh, so that came scoot, up it, the, scoot it down, because at the end of the day, all that water is going to drain back into the school property anyway. Right. So if maybe if we would collect our water and their water from the top, uh, that way it doesn't uh, just wash out their, it, it won't affect our softball, but it will affect their softball. Yeah, down there in that draw, you can make it big enough to handle both sides. Put it on the list for us to do. <laughs> what else? No. So, good? That's all I've got. Okay. And good job to the judge and Carlos for uh, working this up. The, the, the committee was very, very complimentary on what y'all did. That was literally cut little little pasties so I can stick them. <laughs> Carlos said you did that. Huh? Carlos said you did that. Oh uh, yeah, but he, he cut out the pasties and I got to stick them. I got to stick them wherever we wanted. And I say pasties, it's a little baseball field. <laughs> <laughs> Explain yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you start getting text messages. Uh. Um, do you have anything? Uh, no, sir. Okay. I think I think that plan from from what I'm, you know, we met before. I, I think that that'll really be good for the city and okay. town. Okay. Okay. Oh well, well, thank you. Uh, item 25, approving a resolution in support of uh, House Bill 3683, a bill relating to groundwater management and river and spring flow. This bill was filed by uh, Representative Morales after the meeting here. He had originally drafted a bill to create a groundwater district, but after the meeting here and listening to everybody, um, he instead filed, which was the 3099 that I had in the last session. He filed that bill. I do have a couple of changes that I think we need to add to that, um, where the Water Development Board would have to create an advisory committee um, to assist them in setting this up, which would be one member from Beverly County Commission Court, one from the city, a member representing landowners, one member representing conservation groups, and one member representing water marketing groups uh, to set these standards. So I will make a, a total motion. of how many members? Five. Five. Um, I will make a motion to approve a resolution of support and to send Mr. Morales a committee substitute with those changes. 
I have a motion, Commissioner Nunnerton. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Item 26. Where is it, Authoriz authorization to take back the five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, item twenty six by Commissioner Ellison. We've already done it. Previous thing. Item twenty seven. Update on animal control sheriff. Uh, pretty exciting. Looks like we caught all the dogs. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the facility is basically up and running. Uh, we just got, uh, in the last week or two, we got our, our permits to be able to order supplies and chemicals. Uh, the, the three animal control personnel have been active, uh, for the last four or five months working, uh, in conjunction with the city. Uh, they've been working very well. The city has really helped them during this time period. I think that basically we're now, we're standing on We'll be staying on our own once we get the chemicals. So I think that they've been uh, making arrangements to get them ordered. We had one more piece of paper to get signed and get approved, but I think that that's just uh, formality to, to get going. Do we have a bed on the I mean, or, or a comfort bed? Uh, one of our, uh, the uh, animal control deputy is contacting uh, Dr. Dr. Martin first and then going from there to see if we can, I don't know if that's the proper way to do it or. <coughs> What, but we need to get somebody. I know you got to have a bed. Yeah. So, just, just yeah, so and all he does is he signs off that these people here are authorized to do what they need to do. Uh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't no, so, so we're looking, we're still looking for uh, kennel techs. Uh, <laughs> we've got. Uh, Poop scoopers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real fancy <laughs> name there. He wants to pay more money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my $15,000 a year job to a $40,000 a year job. <laughs> so, so, uh, that, that's, uh, that's been a process because we can't find, uh, qualified, uh, applicants for that. They don't know how to use a shovel. Other issues. <laughs> Sheriff, uh, what are we doing about dead animals and kind of roads? Are y'all doing anything? No, with that, dead animals, we're not handling any, any of that. Uh, that's still up to the the uh, precinct crews or somebody complains or whatever. Uh, that's something that, you know, we're probably not going to handle. But if we pick them up, do we take them over there to your facility? <laughs> no. no. Uh, <laughs> what, what do we do with them? Just go to the go to go to the dump. I think that they they have some type of agreement there at the at the landfill. Okay. The other deal, uh, also, sheriff, <clears throat> I hadn't had a chance to run this by you. When we pick up a stray animal, the building maintenance or whatever that group picks them up, but picks up the stray animals. So one of the conversations that we had with uh, the fairgrounds committee was because they wanted to build something, a location on that plan for these animals. Uh, and I think it would be better because y'all have a department and y'all will even have kennel techs. Uh, <laughs> if we built some pins down there for you, uh, maybe three pins, that way we pick them up and we take them to you since y'all will be animal control. Okay. Uh, that was a suggestion which, which I think uh, would probably be best. Uh, that way they actually, y'all are going to be around there and they can get care if they want to and y'all already have a, a budget line item for bed or whatever. Okay. Right, uh, we're talking about livestock, right? Yes. Horses, cattle, goats. I think that works best because then you're not bringing diseases and stuff into the fairgrounds. And that was one of the concerns that they had, that this way we can we have a place for them, we have a place we can quarantine them and they're away from the facility and we're not using just a massive amount of land. And you're talking about a pipe structure? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. you got any grazing land over there? A bunch of garden. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring me. <laughs> 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 so, He's playing, folks. He'll <laughs> 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 be out there fencing 2,500. <laughs> so I, I, that's all I had. I mean, it looks like I mean, we got all our permits. DEA finally gave us the okay. Uh, yes. Right so. 
Yeah, it was a it was a it was a lengthy process, but we got it we got it done. It's gotten done. So now we're we'll gonna start working. Work. I mean, those guys are they're extremely busy every day. <coughs> so it'll be good when we start. I guess we'll send us pictures of the first dog we actually get to put in the in this pen. Uh, that way we know that it's uh, we're open for business type deal. Yes, we can we can do that. <laughs> Get your phone number out there. Is it going to be your phone number they call? No, no, no. Yeah, they're going to be busy. Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> Item 28, discussion possible action authorizing Joe Frank Martinez, Sheriff Joe Frank Martinez, to renew an interlocal agreement between Valverde County, Texas, and Terrell County, Texas. This agreement is to provide for, I guess it's in house. To provide the housing and right. care of certain inmates incarcerated or to be incarcerated in Valverde County Correctional Facility. Mm -hmm. Second. I have a motion Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Five zero vote. Item 29, approval to enter into a what the hell? Con that one. contract with Spectrum to changing fiber services to two gigabytes at a price of $2,240 per month through the E-rate program authorizing county judge to sign and, and where's he at? Ram okay with it? He's okay with it and, and what Ram said was that we were going from one to two and it was only like $140 correct me if I'm wrong or something like that uh, difference. Per well, we're going to pay this out of the E-rate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Second. I have a motion Commissioner Nettleton. Second Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Uh -huh. <laughs> I zero vote. Item 30, authorization to paint the ceiling of the uh, of the third floor at the judicial courthouse at a cost of $6,200 to pay out of and move funds to Broadway. I guess out of would mean for more what we say. There is, um, before we get contingency again, there's still 50 some odd thousand dollars, $58,000 if I'm not mistaken, in building maintenance. Is that right? I, that's I what I looked up a little while ago. I didn't see this budget adjustment on there. That's what they usually passed. I never remember. Within their own, within their own area. Yeah. This is the price we got to do it. Mm -hmm. And this was the, well, we had another price that's two thousand dollars cheaper, but that guy wanted to get paid every week. And Gedmo said we couldn't do that. Why can't we do that? And say two thousand dollars. Gedmo, are you there? Yes. What is it? Why can't we? Wasn't the other price? Did you say forty two hundred dollars? It was it was more than forty two hundred, yes. But he wanted to get paid every week. He, he wanted to get paid the week he, he's done. What's the problem? The problem so, uh, for our process is that we get invoiced and then we process the check once the department head uh, signs the invoice, turns it into billing and you guys approve bills every court, correct? Yes. But I still, don't right. see the, I still don't see the problem. Well, we can't and pay. I, well, hold on, hold on. I, I've offered to pay him with a credit card. He said he doesn't want a credit card. So we can pay him that, that day. Uh, and he don't want to do that because we do have that option. Well, I understand that, that, but I understand why we want to get paid with a credit card either because you got a fee that goes with it. But I still don't understand why we couldn't figure out a way to make that happen to save $2,000. No, Purchasing doesn't pay the, the vendor directly. No, no, I understand. So why can't we just have to say $2,000? That could be done with a special order, right, Judge? No. No, it can't. You only approved to pay claims that are approved by the auditor and forwarded to you. We can't get the claim in time to get it to you to have it ordered to be paid and distributed by the treasurer. Our out was the credit card. He didn't want to accept the credit card. Now, if he wants to time it correctly, <clears throat> to where he turns in his invoice on a Friday and possibly gets paid on a Tuesday, you absolutely could do that, and we can run the process as not by the expense. How long is he going to take you to do it? He said one week. But he wants to get paid the full amount at the end of the week. At the end of the week or the end of his, uh, at the end of his job, you know? At, at the end of his job. And then I asked him, because he, he said we can draw on his uh, quote, so I asked, well, how long is it going to take to think the fair floor uh, ceiling? He said one week. Right. So he, he pretty much just wants to get paid at, at right when he's done. Right. And we do offer a percent to completion payments, but he did not want to do that as well. He wanted to complete it and get paid.
without a credit card. So, so we, we simply don't open the checkbook and just open so the checks. So if it gets done on Friday, we could possibly do it by Tuesday. Possibly that would be a special situation because bills do close. Mm -hmm. But if that is what we can do to send the taxpayers two thousand dollars, we can. Could, 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 could we do the forty two hundred, Judge? Get there something? Okay, well, uh, Commissioner <laughs> Wardlow. Uh, is there some? I mean, let's try to figure it out. Okay. Can you bring it back to us? There's got to be a way to do this. I mean, if, 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 if can, can we table it and bring it back after second well, session? Well, it, yes, after executive session, that would yeah. be good. Not okay. next week, so we want to get that done, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I yeah. yeah. No, that, that's a, that that'd be something we'll talk about then. Yeah, I have a motion to table. Yeah, motion to table. Second. A motion to table. Bring back after executive session. Commissioner Flotus made the motion. Commissioner Wardlaw seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five Aye. zero vote. That's what meeting keeps getting. Uh, item 31, approving a lease agreement between Valverde County and Greg Martinez for ABO Youth Football League. Edgar, we're at? And it's going to be at the 50 acres. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion, Commissioner Middleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Item 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> 32. <laughs> yeah. Presentation of Safety Achievement Award to the County by Richter. Uriah Tech Risk Management Consultant. I saw it. It seems like I was just here not too long ago presenting this award. Yeah, but y'all earned another award, a <laughs> safety achievement award. If I need that, yes, you played a great part, you're human resource director. But I want to thank y'all for allowing us to come train to, you know, and support. I really enjoy that. when you show up. You're so perky. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I just want to get up and go around and do it. <laughs> but no, you know what, congratulations, you know, uh, uh, this is earned, so you do have to have a plan, you do have to do training, and actually your numbers have to be down, you know, your loss ratio has to be a 0.7 or lower, which you are, which helps also your price to stay down. Yeah. Okay. But maybe the, one of the best things y'all are doing is keeping your employees safe and helping them get to work and go home safely to their families. So thank you for your support. And like I said, I have your plaque here, and I do have two press releases that you can, uh, uh, so we can give it to the press. So that they can we get a picture? Can yes, picture? and of course, we're going to have you in our county magazine, and it's going to come out in our, our TAP website, and we are letting other counties know so that they can encourage to do it also. What a great job Juanita's doing. That's all right. Yes. Yeah. You okay? Can you get up? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. You're really slow. <laughs> You're on trip. That's not right. It's like oh, she really is. <laughs> no, no, get on this side. You get it. Y'all get over here. You're part of the deal. Hey, there we go. Y'all get it, You see where? You bet. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I'm right here. I'm here. We got, got masks on. We're okay. Yeah. We're all yeah. vaccinated. Can I get you guys to? Uh, you're photobombing. <laughs> well, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> you're like, uh, <laughs> you put two fingers on my head. Because you're, right. right. you're like, like a little tiny head way back there. All right, everybody, big smiles. Here we go. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. You got to smile and you open your eyes. Yeah. In my little corner. Oh, look at that. 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 He's always so bubbly, man. Yeah. Go to work. <laughs> Thank you for coming, sir. You will. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Item 33 discussion possible action on an overtime pay for precinct 3 and precinct 4 employees who went to help the comp stock for the vaccine and uh, on March 26th and the precinct 4 distribution on Sunday, March 28th. 
Uh, I put this on here <laughs> just so we could, you know, we had sort of out of the ordinary, and I think they need to get paid. Motion to Second. A motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Approving human resource resource report March third, twenty twenty one through March 29th, twenty ninth, twenty twenty one. Motion. Second. A motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero vote. Closed session for uh, consultation for privilege to protect the government code 551.071 2 sign attorney privilege 551.071 2 contemplated delegation. Uh, take about a five minute break and then if y'all will clear the room, we'll come back in executive session here in the here in the front. Okay, uh, court now come back in the session. It is 11:15. Uh, no action was taken. We're going to go back to item 30. Judge, I'll make a motion to reject this and request the purchasing agent bring all options and bids available back to the court at the next meeting. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. 5 0 vote. I've got a question on that real quick. Uh, bring back all the bids and options that are available. And then we have approval. For approval. For approval. Okay. Yeah. All right. That'll work. Uh, Mark, are you in here? No. Okay. We're going to go back. I had a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, and I had a second, uh, Commissioner Flores, to bring back to reject this item and for Guillermo to bring back to the court all all bids that were presented and options available to, for those bids at the next commissioner's court meeting. Okay. Let's all those in favor? We already had a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now it's a five zero. All right. Uh, is there any other commissioner's comments? We have any judges' comments? There are none. Meetings adjourned. Thank y'all.